If you want to get your CIP Level 2 certification, Pass Question Team provides you the latest CIP Level 2 NACE CIP 2001 practice test questions for your best preparation. All questions and answers are collected from real test and verified by experts and successful candidates. If you study well, we ensure you can pass your NACE CIP 2001 Coding Inspector Level 2 exam easily. Question 1. You are the NACE coding inspector on a tank lining project and are asked to perform a high voltage holiday test after the coding applicators have completed their final repairs. After meeting all the confined space entry permit you enter the tank and notice a very strong odor of solvent. Your first course of action should to A. Investigate to find the source of the odor. B. Don your air supplied respirator and continue the testing. C. Exit the tank and immediately and report the problem to the nearest safety supervisor. D. Exit the tank and document the incident in your daily report. Answer. C. Question 2. You are working as the only in-house NACE Level 2 inspector in a shop setting when an independent third-party NACE Level 3 inspector, representing the owner, presents you with a copy of a non-conformance report, NCR, he has written for a NACE 2, SSPCSP 10 centrifugal blast which you had previously approved. Your first preferred course of action is to a. Verbally challenge the NCR. B. Request a re-blast of the item in question. C. Consult your supervisor. D. Review the NCR with the other inspector. Answer. C. Question 3. Individuals conducting coding surveys should. A. Always be NACE Level 3 Certified Inspectors B. Always be NACE or SSPC Protective Coding Specialists C. Always be Experienced Specification Writers D. Always be Trained and Experienced Coding Industry Answer. D. Question 4. You are a NACE Level 2 coding inspector who has just arrived on a job in progress where there is no inspection and test plan, ITP. The first morning you arrive the job is behind schedule and you are asked to take DIY film thickness readings. Your first preferred course of action is to A. Refuse to take readings until an is in place. B. Develop your own methodology and proceed take the readings. C. Use a generally accepted industry standard and to take readings. D. Call your supervisor. Answer. C. Question 5. You are the NACE Level 2 coding inspector where SSPCPA2 has been specified with an additional requirement that no individual gauge reading shall be below a certain value. As this is not part of the standard you should a. Ignore the additional requirement b. Enforce the additional requirement c. Call your supervisor d. Request clarification from the specifier. Answer. B. Question 6. When observing design defects the NACE inspector should. A. Document the defect and the potential problems that could result. B. Ignore the defect as the inspector can't change the design. C. 
Request that the item be rebuilt with a better design for coating. D. Stop the job immediately. Answer. A. Question 7. You are a NACE Level 2 in-house inspector working in a shop. Your in-house requires you to perform a sleeve test to test for soluble salts. However the third-party NACE Level 3 inspector, the owner, has a sand smart meter and has achieved a very different result and has rejected the pre-cleaning. Your first course of action is to A. Advise the other inspector he is using an incorrect method. B. Redo the pre-cleaning based on the other inspector's results. C. Review the specification with the other inspector to see what method was specified. D. Advise your QC manager to change the ITP to the use of the salt smart meter. Answer. C. Question 8. You are the NACE Level 2 inspector on a project where overcoating of galvanized steel is being performed. The specification references SSPCSP16 as the surface preparation method. At the pre-job meeting operations personnel make it clear that abrasive blasting will not permit it. The owner's representative asks you what other methods might be used. Of the options shown below, what would be the preferred option in this situation? A. SP1 followed by acid etching. B. SP1 followed by caustic etching. C. SP1 followed by SP2. D. SP1 followed by SP3. Answer. C. Question 9. As a NACE Level 2 inspector, NACE clearly indicates that you ain't qualified to independently produce final documentation for a shop project. A. True. B. False. Answer. A. Question 10. As a NACE Level 2 inspector on a field job, prior to submission your documentation should always reviewed and approved by A. A NACE Protective Coating Specialist B. A NACE Level 1 Inspector C. Another NACE Level 2 Inspector D. A NACE Level 3 Inspector Answer. D.